Hey, what is up everyone? It's Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2 and welcome to your first video in your series over SQL Server. Now, we are going to be covering a lot of information in this series, but to start, let's just talk about what SQL Server is. SQL Server is what's known as a relational database management system. There are many different kinds of relational database management systems. The one we are going to be talking about in this series is known as Microsoft SQL or SQL Server. Now SQL Server is a database management system that can cost money, but there are free versions. So that's great. I'm going to be using that one. So you guys are welcome to join me on that. Now what is a database? A database's job is to store data. Now I know that's pretty obvious from the name, but let's get a little bit more specific. What is data? Basically, data is anything we want to store and use at a later date. Oftentimes, databases are used for businesses. That way they can analyze data and make business decisions off of that data. For example, if you're talking about sales, right, you can calculate what items are selling the most, how much is selling, what price are they being sold at, who's buying them. All of that information can be calculated from data that is stored inside of a database. So using data within a database, we can get a summation of how our business is going. There's other uses too, not just for analyzing data, but often databases are used to power applications. So if you have an application here, often there will be a backend database. And then when the user puts information into this application, it will get stored in a database. Then the next time that user uses the application, it's going to get the data from the database and present it to the user. So databases are often used for websites, when you sign in, when you create user accounts, when you purchase stuff. All of that data is stored inside of a database. That's because the application itself does not change. The code used to create this application stays the same. You can run this application over and over and over again, and the only thing that changes is the data. So there's a separation between the application and the data that powers that application. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good summary of what a database is. Now as we go on, obviously we're going to get a little bit more specific, but this is just a good overview. You can think of a database as something that stores a ton of information, then we can analyze that data, and we can use that database to power an application or to just make our lives a lot easier with storing information. So we covered the DB inside of this acronym, Relational Database Management System. But what does the R mean? That means relational. What does that mean? Well, a relation is basically a fancy word that means table. Quite fancy. So a table is drawn as a square, and then we have columns listed across this way. And we'll often give column headers. So for example, we could say first name, last name, phone, email. Then an individual row will fill out that information. So one person will put in his first name, his last name, his phone number, and his email. And you can continue to store more and more and more people inside of this table. So it's kind of like an Excel spreadsheet, but there are a lot of differences between a database and Excel. So now we need to discuss why would you want to use a database over something like an Excel spreadsheet or just a text document and so forth. So there's many different ways we can store data. For example, there's Excel, there's something known as comma separated value, and that's just values, comma, values, comma, values, comma. There's text files, and then there's things like databases. Now each one of these has an application. You don't always have to use a database for everything, but there are some specific situations when you want to use a database. One of the first reasons, if you're comparing databases to like Excel, for example, is that spreadsheets are usually all or nothing. And what that means is if you have multiple columns inside of this table, inside of an Excel sheet, you can't say, oh, we're going to let this column be viewed and this one, but I want this one to be private and this one to be private. That's not something you can easily do with an Excel spreadsheet or any kind of spreadsheet. But with a database, you can select just certain columns from a table, and then these ones can be private. Along with that, SQL Server supports roles. So a role is essentially a title you give a group of people that says what they are allowed and not allowed to do. So you know, you can have administrator and then some other roles in there. <laughs> 
and that's going to allow them to do certain things with this database. That's contrary to Excel, where you would have to make different files and edit the file permissions. It's a whole lot easier with databases, because you can just say, oh, anyone with this role or this person can do this, but anyone else is not allowed to do this. It's a lot more intuitive. It's a cool word. Intuitive. So back to this table. If we're in an Excel sheet and you just want this column to be presented, that's not something you can easily do. But with SQL Server, that's a piece of cake. All you have to do is say something like select and then say, let's say this is the phone number, for example. Then you could say phone number and then say from and then say whatever the table name is. So we could say users. And then the only thing that's going to be returned is this column. So these ones are not even going to be shown. Along with all of this, databases are more secure. They're easy to back up, they're easier to recover, and overall, it's just a better way to protect your data. If you're just working at a small little company and you need to store a little bit of information, an Excel sheet might be fine. But if you're talking about enterprise applications, there's no way you will ever use a spreadsheet for that kind of stuff. Nearly any time you're working with an application that needs to work with data, you're going to want to work with a database. And finally, the last reason I could conjure up is that you can store a lot of information inside of a database. We're talking terabytes, petabytes, a lot of information. You can have a table with millions of rows and still have a functioning database. Where if you try to store that much information in a spreadsheet or a text file or a comma separated value file, you're going to have really, really bad performance and probably mess everything up. That's one of the biggest reasons people use databases is they're designed to store a lot of information. Now there's so many different types of database management systems out there. Why would you want to pick SQL Server? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One is that SQL Server is owned by Microsoft. Now I know some of you people absolutely love Microsoft and some of you hate Microsoft, but regardless, if you're working with, for example, the .NET framework, which that is basically the infrastructure you build apps on when you're working on the Microsoft platform, it's very easy to integrate with SQL Server. You can use other database management systems when you're working on the .NET framework, and you can also use SQL Server for other applications, for example, Java applications. But in general, when you work with a company that works with the .NET framework, they will use a SQL Server backend. That's just so everything is owned and managed by the same company, Microsoft. Now there are some competitors to Microsoft. For example, there's MySQL, there's Oracle Database, and there's a few other relational database management systems out there. Now where does SQL Server stand in competition to these two? Well, I would say it's somewhere right in the middle, if you ask me. <laughs> Oracle, on the other hand, is usually considered to be like super up there, like enterprise level. And MySQL is kind of considered to be user level. Now, I might be generalizing a little bit too much because in reality, you could use probably any three of these for any application. So if you're working with an app that is small but might get large and still needs to manage a lot of data efficiently, SQL Server might be the best choice for you. But even if not, I have videos over both of these topics. So my recommendation is just learn them all and then you're going to know the differences between them and you're going to know which ones are right in which situations. Well, that's about all I got to say about SQL Server in this video. Hopefully that gave you a really rough overview of what SQL Server is. And I know this had a lot of information in it. If it's a little overwhelming or if you're just completely new to this topic, what I would recommend is just to keep watching this series as we're gonna be breaking down more and more information about SQL Server and learning some of the SQL commands and at that point, you're gonna start grasping things and all of this information is just gonna make sense. So if you've liked this video, please click like, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video where we will be downloading SQL Server. Thanks guys.